Hey everyone, it's meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff here at WBZ, joined by our executive weather producer, Terry Ellison. Honored to be with you this Tuesday morning. We're streaming live on CBS News Boston and on YouTube Live. So with YouTube, they have the functionality that you can chime in and ask your questions to us. But uh, Terry, we're starting to do these more often with the incoming storms. We want to get out to the people and have them chime in and kind of do a deeper dive into weather than we can do in our newscasts. Yeah, I, I think there's lots of interest around this storm. Um, I think simply because the S word is involved. Yeah. It snows in, when snow's involved any time of year, but especially in April, uh, kids out playing soccer, baseball, all kinds of things, go, spring things going on. Yep. Um, and, you know, we've got a multifaceted kind of kitchen sinky kind of storm coming up. Yep. Just what the doctor ordered. Of course, we don't have really any snow in the month of March. I can't even remember the last time. We, so. Yeah, Boston didn't have any. <laughs> um, and here we go. April shows up. And again, at, right off the bat, we should say we're not expecting a major snowstorm in the Boston area or even in the nearby suburbs. But there are... We do have a snow accumulation map and it is April 2nd. So. Absolutely, yeah. With no snow in March, do you think people just kind of got complacent a little bit? It can snow in April. It can snow in April. Sure, it can snow in May. Right. Um, I think it was 76 or 78, I'm putting myself on the spot. May 10th it snowed. So it can happen and I think it was, um, Maybe it was six years or so ago we had a decent snow in April. So it yeah. does happen. It does happen. Yeah. Um, but more so, and we'll get into this, the specifics, but more so in this time of year you really need certain things to go your way, or not go your way, depending upon your how you look at it, to get snow. And that's certain things like elevation, time of day, all those types of things. Yep. You, you know, needs A snow. really cold air mass in right. place, yeah. Needs to snow at the right time of day, at the right intensity, and even more so uh, for if you live, a little bit of elevation helps a lot this time of year as far as snow goes. For sure. And so I mentioned it off the top that we are streaming on YouTube Live. And so at times we'll be looking down at a phone to monitor comments. Yeah. Please don't think that we're Ignoring, ignoring each other or <laughs> ignoring you at home. Uh, we're, we're definitely trying to plug in to reach you where you are. So let's hop into it. Let's, let's show it. Futurecast. And uh, you know, one thing that, Terry, we were looking at right before we were going on is some of the newest models coming in. Coming in a bit colder, mm. potentially, than what we thought. So we're gonna monitor that trend, <laughs> or, or at least that blip, very closely. Yeah, I th the advantage that we have today as opposed to yesterday when we were talking about the storm is that a lot of the high resolution models are now starting to come in, or we're starting to get within their range. The higher resolution models tend to go out less far, uh, further in time. So within 48 hours, which we are now, we have a lot more data to work with. Um, and so we're starting to see some of that high risk data come in. And a uh, little bit of a change in the last, uh, just in the last run, we saw sure. for, for late Wednesday night and early, uh, Thursday morning. So let's take it uh, sort of hour by hour or timeline wise. Tonight, some showers start to break out for parts of the area. It's not a washout of an evening, it's some scattered showers, mainly south in really west of Boston. Yeah, not, not even really, it's so, almost like a little break off piece from the actual storm. The storm is, is gonna still be out in the Midwest. We got a little piece of that breaks off with, a, with some showers this afternoon and this evening, mostly southwestern parts of the area. You can see a little bit up, up towards Boston, but if you live up in Essex County, southern New Hampshire, you may not see anything. Um, and again, it's just rain and it's just kind of like a, an appetizer. It's right. Wet the palate a little bit. <laughs> sure. Gets you in the mood. Uh, we do have, um, by the time we get into tomorrow, kids go into school. At the moment, the thinking is that they'll probably maybe not need the rain gear for the morning, mm. but certainly as we go further and further into the day, they're going to need that, whether it is actual rain or perhaps a changeover to sleet or That's right. some frozen perspective. Yeah, I think this is one, uh, a little bit of a change from yesterday. Um, I think a little bit of a later start time tomorrow. So you can see on the, on the graphics, there's really not much going on tomorrow morning. Um, and it may take until midday, even early afternoon in some areas, to start to see some of the rain come in. And it's not going to come in like a wall. It, it'll kind of gradually get some showers, and then by later in the afternoon, we get into like the, the meat or the brunt of the storm. And one thing we're watching closely in any winter storm is the amount of sleet. That mm. absolutely destroys a snowfall forecast. Sleet is a tricky thing to forecast, uh, but snowfall is as well. Sleet is, I think, going to play a predominant role in a lot of locations, yeah. really kind of west in, in a little bit north of Boston. Yeah, so uh, for, for those that aren't familiar, I know we've, we've had this discussion several times before about sleet.
Um, and what this, what happens is with sleet, you get a warm nose, like a layer. Uh, in, in this case, it's going to be about between five and ten thousand feet up, or as we say, near seven hundred millibars. Um, a little warm nose coming in, and basically above freezing. So the snow falls into that warmer air, melts into raindrops. So about seven eight thousand feet up, it'll actually be raining. But then, uh, as it continues to fall, the air gets colder again and it freezes, so the, the snow chances are done, but you have the water now freezing into ice pellets. So that's kind of what's happening. It's snowing into a milder, a milder air mass, which melts it to rain, which then falls into a colder air mass again, which means it falls on the ground level as sleet or ice pellets. Right off the side of the house, um, not as, certainly not as dangerous as freezing rain, um, and again, doesn't accumulate like snow does. Right, and and as Terry mentioned, um, freezing rain pretty dangerous. But when it comes to sleet, a little bit less dangerous, and that that can wreck our snowfall forecasts uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, let me hop back into the timeline of things. Um, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So I was going to say. So so again, tomorrow afternoon and evening, it's a lot of rain in Eastern Mass. It's it's a mix of rain, maybe some wet flakes, a lot of sleet in um, you know northwest of Boston, northwest of 495, a lot of pinging off the windows, off the cars, and then I think the real question is what happens after midnight into Thursday morning. This to me is the biggest wild card, and what we saw today in some of the high res models was. Yep a little bit of a colder, and we're talking about temperatures still near or slightly above freezing, but every degree really counts yep. uh, when, you're, when you're talking about sleet versus snow. And also, at nighttime, mm -hmm. it's not battling the insulation, it's not battling the higher sun angle, right. so it has less things going against it. It can and has snowed at 35 degrees, mm -hmm. and it can accumulate, but it's coming off of two also milder days. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of balancing acts that we have to contend with a little bit. Yeah, and this is basically the battle that's going to be going on in the weather office for the next 48 hours is, you know, you, me, Eric, um, you know, just basically Jason in the morning trying to figure out Okay, so when does when does the rain change to sleet? When does the sleet change to snow? Does it? Where does it? Does it accumulate? Um, you know, these are complex things any time of year, but this time of year, with like you said, you're battling daytime, um, you know, d daytime versus nighttime. You're battling, you know, warm ground. Even if it so our future cast says it's snowing. For, Pause it, pausing this at ten thirty. Yeah, is this accumulating in Boston? Unlikely. Right. Um, but, Flakes falling, but yeah. perhaps not accumulating. Exactly. And I think, again, during the daytime in April, if it's snowing out and it's 30, you know, it, it, that, those temperatures may be a little bit high. You know, we just saw on one of our high-res models 32, 33 degrees in, like, Fitchburg, Lawrence area. So if it's coming down hard enough, it may start to accumulate th uh, Thursday morning uh, into Thursday afternoon. We may have to um, – so we had a 1 to 3-inch line, a uh, forecast line that was in – uh, Northern Worcester County, we may have to extend that over to, say, Essex County, Northern Worcester County, so that one to three inch line that you see, that light blue, I'm wondering if we may have later today, given some of the colder solutions on the high-res models, that we may have to pull that down into like Lawrence and uh, Westford and areas like that for Thursday morning. All things considered, when it comes to snow in a, in a coating to an inch or one to three, maybe not the biggest threats that they mm -hmm. may be facing because we also have some soaking rains and also the wind too. Lots to, lot to break down. Of course, we're focused on the snow because that's that's why everybody, probably you're not tuned in because we're talking about another inch or two of rain. You're right. tuned in because you heard the snow word, right? So we tend to focus on it, but it is certainly not the only hazard. We're, we're, we're talking, I mean, the wind at the coast and also even uh, in some of the higher elevated areas, you know, could be pretty, pretty nasty. Absolutely. Wednesday night into Thursday. Uh, I think that it's going to be howling Wednesday night into Thursday. I mean, kids waking up and going to the bus stop Thursday morning, you could see wind gusts 30 to 50 plus miles per hour. The Cape's going to be mm -hmm. rocking too. Um, something that uh, I've been watching very closely is all of the beach projects, the sand projects that they've been doing. I think when you have winds for a persistent period too, you know, over 36 yes. hours, coming out from the east, it's just gonna claw away at some of those um, sand dunes. So so here, here's a question that um, I got this morning, sure. and I also got last night, and it was from my high schooler. Is there any chance that we could have a delay or no school on Thursday? And I'm like, I wouldn't count on it. Right. However, um, you know, if it, it, 
you know, if you get an inch or two of, of snow, and this is really for areas north and west of up 45, right. if you get an inch or two of pasty wet snow, and that any snow that does fall Thursday morning is going to be very pasty, sticking on everything. Um, you know, that's the type of stuff that weighs down on the tree limbs and could yeah. cause some outages. If you start talking about tree damage and outages, you know, there could be some schools that have issues Thursday morning. Absolutely. Want to remind everyone, we're about 10 minutes in uh, to our YouTube live broadcast. If you are tuned in on YouTube, feel free to chime in, ask a question. Would love to hear what you're thinking, any thoughts. You know, if we have some meteorologists in the crowd that are watching, anything that you're seeing and any viewers, what you're doing to prepare for this incoming storm. Uh, it. Do you think people got complacent in the month of March in that um, it was wet, don't get me wrong, but uh, it was, I feel like, an easier month. Maybe I'm just blocking it out, but I feel like March overall was a, it was wet, Yeah. one of the wettest months on record, but it was easy for I us, mean, I feel like. We started out, I want to say the, the first 16, 17, 18 days were all above average yep. temperature wise. Now, sure, we had five pretty wet storms, you know, right. some of the weekends were washed out, but as far as what March weather goes, we've seen a lot worse. Uh, yeah. You know, basically no snow, no ice to deal with. It was more so if you had some basement flooding, maybe. Yeah. Or which uh, don't want to discount that for people because that's that's been rough. Yeah, but as far as winter goes, I think people have sort of put that aside. Like you know, that's over with. Forget it. Um, and here it is. It's it, here we are. <laughs> yes. Uh, you mentioned some of that, those rains. Um, I'm going to pull up a graphic that I think just is absolutely. Uh, crazy to show some of the rainfalls that we've seen. Yeah, so we should mention that, again, get, getting off the snow topic for a minute, um, probably one to three inches of water coming with this storm. Yes. So whether it's all rain for you, which would probably be the case in the, along the coast and over southeastern Mass, over uh, parts of Rhode Island, there's been quite a bit of river flooding down in Rhode Island the last uh, month or so. Um, so we're talking about, you know, another couple inches of water uh, just exacerbating those issues. And uh, I just heard up in southern New Hampshire, they're going to be releasing some of the water that's held up in the dams to make room for more. Um, so I, you know, if you if you've had basement issues in the past couple of storms, you may have them again. This is more of a prolonged event, so I don't know that we're quite as concerned about like the localized street urban flooding stuff because right. it's happening over the course of several days as opposed to all in say six hours. But still, it's another couple inches of water. Absolutely, and in the. Uh, 2024 time span, so you're talking uh, just over three months, we've had nine soaking rains over one inch and even a couple over two inches, three over two yeah. inches. And so, you know, we get another inch and a half, two inches of rain in Boston. It's absolutely what we don't need. Absolutely what we don't need. Yeah, and again, we mentioned like the baseball fields, the soccer fields, yep. uh, the water table rising, um, you know, I, I do think that there's hope that this yeah. that this pattern may be about to shift. Maybe that's maybe that's for another another podcast. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, again, already we're one of the wettest Marches on record, one of the wettest Januarys on record, and now really one of the wettest first three months of the year yeah. in both Boston and Worcester. But you mentioned it. It looks like sort of the atmospheric log jam or the the roller coaster that we've been on mm -hmm. uh, is finally showing some signs of stopping as you get into perhaps next week, the we, end of next week. We can hope, yes. Yeah, we and can. I feel like we might have said that before. Although actually, consider, it, I don't know if many folks remember February. February was very dry, very boring yeah, month. Yeah, true. Um, so we did have a little bit of a break, and it looks like perhaps... After this storm goes by, uh, we may get another break. But we should mention that while the peak of this storm is Wednesday night into Thursday, it doesn't just zip out of here. Either. Right, right. Um, unfortunately, uh, Friday there'll probably be some leftover rain and snow showers. Saturday again, um, nothing all that impactful, just more so kind of miserable, you know, sunless days. Uh, we may not see like a lot of sunshine again until sometime. Sunday afternoon, maybe not until eclipse on Monday. Yeah, so I wanted to show the seven day forecast and we do have a question from Wicked Weather on YouTube. Hey guys, winds are always too conservative and these situations mostly overachieve. Are hurricane force winds possible for Cape Ann due to our damaging wind direction up here from the Northeast? Thanks. Uh, 70 plus miles an hour, I, I think, I, I wouldn't rule it out completely. I think we're looking more so in the, uh, 50, 50 to 60, 50 to 65 range, which is yeah. no joke. Um, I do think that Thursday morning, um, the storm's gonna come up over us and there's gonna be almost like a little comma head forming that could be right over, say, the North Shore, yep. um, Hampton, New Hampshire coast. So 
that that high tide that's happening at say seven between six thirty and seven thirty Thursday morning could be kind of nasty. Yeah. Uh, as as you know, you're going to be caught right in that sort of northwest corner of the storm where winds could be easily fifty to sixty five miles an hour. And we always get some really good observations from Cape Ann. We have a lot of great weather watchers across the area. Cape Ann um, is no exception to that. I, I think that what I've found is Cape Ann, it really depends on where you are as to what those wind gusts are. Oh, no, and I no, guess that's the yeah. case for any place, but you know, if you're right on the water, that wind mm -hmm. is, is hitting you, no friction coming off the ocean, you get those higher wind gusts. But as yeah. soon as you go inland, maybe uh, three miles, then you don't feel it True. very much at all. So. True, but I mean, I think Cape Ann a little bit, but more so like Salisbury, Hampton, those areas in the northern mass coastline up through like southern Maine have really been battered. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yep. Battered all winter long. With, uh, we've had several storms that have had like strong southeasterly winds, which is li literally the worst case up there. Yeah. And while this is more of a nor'easter, uh, I still think those areas are going to get hit again yeah. with at least minor flooding Thursday morning. Absolutely. Uh, so I wanted to show the seven-day forecast here uh, because, as uh, Terry mentioned, we have sort of an unsettled pattern starting this evening all the way into Saturday, and the next real chance to see s some sun arrived Sunday. We were holding out hope for Saturday. It's looking like the storm is going to linger a little bit for Saturday. But by the time we get into Monday, at the moment, <laughs> knock on wood, knock on wood. <laughs> we look to be fairly clear and fairly dry for Eclipse Day, which is that three straight April 8th? Three straight. Uh, yeah. Which, talk about breaking climatology, right? Right. I think, you know, especially for northern New England, I think there's like something like 70 to 75 percent chance of being cloudy on that particular day. Absolutely. So, so that's why all along over the last several months, if you've heard us talking about the eclipse and the reason why you're flying to Texas yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. is because New England in April, especially northern New England, the chances of getting a sunny day are pretty low. Um, but as of now, it kind of looks like this storm will pull away. This, this Wednesday, Thursday storm, which will linger into the weekend, should pull away in time for a, a relatively clear day here. Uh, and perhaps much more clear than, say, Texas. Yeah, yeah. I have already warned my family that we may fly into Dallas and then hit the road and drive so to how the far, So I was going to say, how far are you willing to... Are you just going to drive until you get... Within reason. I mean, I'm not driving back to New England or anything like yeah. that, but... I think that you know within six hours that's reasonable. I think so. The eclipse, the the full eclipse is there. The, the totality is around what time in Dallas? It's one thirty in Dallas. Okay. Yeah. So you got to be on the you got to forecast early in the morning, and yeah. if you need to, be on the road pretty early. I think my game plan will be Sunday, pretty much all day. I'll be on my computer on my phone forecasting, mm -hmm. and then I think probably Sunday by. 10 p.m. I'll probably hit the road for our next place and just be there. We'll find a your family. You know, God bless type. your family. <laughs> they're, they're, they're very <laughs> understanding of Daddy's passion of okay. you know STEM okay. and science and everything. And I will say, it's worth it. Uh, yes, we, so we exactly. mentioned this yesterday, and we had another question. And the uh, producer in the morning meeting today said. My husband's convinced that 95% is fine. Yeah. We're going to put our, our glasses on. We're going to see an amazing sight. And sure, if you have the protective eyewear and you put them on and you're in Boston or the area and it's 93 95% a, a totality, it'll be cool to look up at the sun with your glasses and see the moon over it. But it's not, it's just kind of like, oh. That's it's not cool. the life-changing experience. It's not 100% totality, which will up in Burlington, Vermont, Lancaster, New Hampshire, Caribou, Maine. That is a completely different, yeah. um, you know, set of circumstances. So if you can get there, you really should. And if you can't get there, you'll have to wait 55 years. Forget it. Yeah, I think most of us. 55 years for the next yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and like we mentioned yesterday, I wouldn't plan on drive. If you're thinking, I'll, grow up, I'll go up Sunday, grab a hotel room. The, the book, rooms have been booked for like a year. Up yeah, there. yeah. Um, so good luck. Maybe bring a tent and you yeah, know, there you go. Just bit. just camp out on Lake Champlain or something. Um, no more questions at the moment. Um, any final words? We've been talking about twenty minutes now. Yeah. So I would just say in recapping the upcoming storm, uh, maybe we could bring up the accumulation map again. Absolutely. Um, I think again, what everybody wants to know is, am I going to have to shovel? Am I going to have to snow blow? Am you know, am I going to have to clean the car off? And I I would say it's still highly elevation dependent. So if you are in northern Worcester County, above five hundred feet. 
say Ashby, Ashburnham, you know, those towns that got socked. If anyone remembers last March, they had almost yeah. three feet of snow up there. I remember it. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> were there. I was there. <laughs> um, those same towns could get hit again. I mean, they're not getting three feet, but they could get several inches of snow and, you know, with the risk of power outages. The farther down you come in elevation towards 495, say, you know, Westford, Chelmsford, um, still could see a slushy coating to an inch or two, and that's, again, the biggest wild card for me is Thursday morning, do we have to bring that one to three inch line yeah. down a little bit into northern Middlesex and Essex County? Yep, absolutely, and we'll be uh, on top of this all afternoon. Eric will be following it. I'll, I'll have the news at noon in about 40 minutes here. Eric will be following it uh, starting at 5 p.m., and you know, stay here with WBZ for the latest forecast. Terry, great working behind the scenes um he pours over all the models that we don't have time for so i mean, appreciate your time yeah, yeah it, it's good to have as many hands as possible I mean, sure. especially in a storm situation like this and i will say that our team is we we all work so well together but there's a constant thread of communication with eric and jason and you and you and myself and um, and that's what it takes. I mean, it's such a complex situation. It really takes a lot of teamwork. Yeah, a lot of uh, eyeballs. A lot of that. eyeballs. Because there's so many things that you can look over. Someone, uh, Bob, we'll leave with this comment. Um, the blizzard of 78 reincarnated. Mm, hmm. Maybe not so much, Bob. <laughs> I, I'm hoping he's being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, I think he is, yes. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate everyone tuning in on YouTube Live. We're going to do more of these. So if there is anything that you'd like to see, Please let us know. Uh, we'll try to bring that to you. But uh, for now, for Terry Ellison, I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff. Guys, have a great day. Stay safe.